In this video, we'll explore the presence feature of the WebSocket provider. Now, presence is basically a way of tracking sockets for a given user. Now, it can be helpful in so many ways to figure out uh, from how many devices or from how many tabs a user is logged in, or maybe to show the list of currently logged in users. So, without wasting any time, we'll start writing some code. Now, in order to track users, we need some users first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create a new model, say a make model user uh, with the migration. Now we have created the model and migration both. I'll open the migrations file. Uh, it does not show up here. What's the reason? Database migrations. Yep. Okay. Uh, here I'm going to say a table.string email and table.string password. We're going to keep it really simple for now. Now, once that's done, uh, we're going to open our user model and we are going to basically set up uh, before create hook to encrypt the user passwords because anytime they will log in, uh, the login provider or basically the authentication provider will try to match the password hash. So uh, here we're going to say static boot super.boot and next we're going to say this dot add hook now which hook it is it's before create and then it's going to be a function which will be a generator now here we're going to say this dot password and we're going to use the hash provider dot make this dot password okay so like this uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to say el next, which means we can basically um, move to the next hook or basically the create method itself. Okay, uh, once that's done, I'm going to run the migration saying a migration run. Yep, everything went fine. And we're going to start the REPL to basically create a couple of users. So what I'm going to do is here I'm going to say yield and we're going to grab our user model and we'll call the create method on it. So create for email, we'll say foo at the rate bar.com, uh, password will be secure. Yep, we got our first user. Let's create one more. We'll just change the email to foo at the rate baz and the same password. Now quickly see whether we have got our users in our database or not. So app model user dot all oh like this yep we do have both of the users out here now the next thing we're going to do is basically set up a route from where we can log in this user now we're not going to get into the entire login and sign up process but instead i'm going to do a hack here so i'm going to say force login uh, which will be a generator method and out here I'll say yield request dot auth dot login via ID and we're basically gonna fetch the ID from the query string. So request dot input ID out here and then we're gonna say you like response dot send logged in. Okay. So what we're basically doing out here is uh, using whatever the ID user pass in the query string and call the login via ID method to log in that user. Now, once that's done, let's open our socket file. Yep, we do have the middleware auth here. Now we can basically run the server. So I'm gonna say npm run dev. Yep, we have our server running, localhost, and let's see what we get here. It says a login failure, which means we need to log in first in order to connect to our channel. So here I'm going to say first login will be this ID. It says log, logged in, go back, and for sure it has been connected and we have been able to exchange the message called hello world. Now, what we have done so far is basically logged in the user via this route and running basically uh, adding the opt middleware out here. Now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to get into our chat controller and make use of the presence object. So the third argument out here will be presence. And here we're going to say presence.track, like we want to track 
the socket and for which user so that's going to be socket dot current user dot id this is going to be the id of the currently logged in user and then we can pass some metadata for now we're just going to pass an empty object for so once that's done uh, come back refresh yep everything works fine so let's make a quick change to our client code to basically see the list of users who are currently logged in so i'm going to say uh, ul out here and we'll say constant list will be document dot query selector that will be our ul okay and we're gonna listen for a special event called presence state now this particular event is emitted by the WebSocket provider automatically whenever a new socket joins in or whenever a new socket leaves. And it makes sure to combine all the sockets for a given user. So let's let's basically check it out. Uh, here we're gonna get the state, okay? So state is basically an array. Now if I say console.log state, come back, refresh, yep, we do get the state. Uh, which has an object with the user ID, like the user ID that we tracked here, and with basically the socket ID and any metadata that we have saved, which was an empty object in our case. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna loop over this state array and basically append an li to this UL for each user. So I'm gonna say concert users will be state dot map and function we gotta get the payload here or maybe user not the payload and we're gonna return an li okay that's a list item and for now we're gonna say user dot id is connected from uh payload sorry user dot payload dot length so this payload basically has uh, the information about all the sockets for a given user so here we say devices okay uh, next thing we want to do list dot inner html uh, inner html will be users dot join okay so some really basic stuff it says one is connected from one devices now let's let's make it more readable out here uh, what we're gonna do is uh, inside our metadata we're gonna say email will be socket dot current user dot email okay so we're basically say passing the user email inside the metadata object and now instead of saying users that id we can say user dot payload uh, zero dot meta dot email okay so come back refresh we do see footer bar is connected from one devices now let's say we open another tab it says footer bar is connected from two devices because these are two different tabs and out here it's automatically updated saying uh, connected from two devices now let's say we open the third one come back yep it get updated out here as well now let's say we open a new window and we say force uh, login via ID number up. Oh, this needs to be force login. ID will be two. It says logged in. And if you come here, refresh the page. Yep, it do says footer bar is connected from three devices and footer baz is basically connected from one device. Now, if we let's say keep on removing tabs from here, yep, we do see from one device and from one device. Now, let's say we open another tab for this guy, it automatically updates out here. Now, now you guys can see how easy and simple it is to basically get a list of all the currently logged in users. Now, of course, we are creating a single tab as a device. Uh, what you guys can basically do is save uh, the device out here like device which can be like basically whether the user is logged in from the iPhone app or from the Chrome and on the basis of that you can filter or you can basically group these devices and create them as one single device now one of the most important thing or I would 
feature which presence give you is to make sure once a user log out uh, all of their sockets have been disconnected let me let me actually show you what I mean so quickly I'm gonna do one thing is uh, make it window.client basically we are making it a global to have an access to the client object so that we can play with it. And basically, I'm going to get rid of the emit statement out here. Now, if I refresh and say client.emit the message, we are able to basically send the message and we receive it back. And we have a listener out here. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to set up a route for logging a user out. So I'm going to say route.get, uh, which is logout, OK, uh, out here. And here we're going to say a request and the response. And here we're going to say yield request.auth.logout. And the response will say response.send logout. Okay, some really basic stuff. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this uh, route out here, which is logout. It says logged out. And if I come back for sure, it says login failure. Now we'll log in once again. <clears throat> and if we access, yep, we can access. Uh, basically, we can we can connect to our channel. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm basically gonna open multiple tabs, okay? And from one tab, I'm gonna log out. So from this particular one, uh, I'll say log out. So it says logged out. And if I come here, it says login failure. But from these two tabs, until unless I am not going to refresh, I can basically exchange messages. So if I say client.emit this message, yep, I do get it back. Which means even though I've been logged out, I'm still connected because WebSockets have a persistent connection. Now, since we have our presence in place, we can get basically pull all the sockets for this current user and disconnect them in one go. So if I go back to the logout, basically the routes file, <clears throat> out here, we're gonna grab our WebSockets provider, and here we're gonna get, say, constant uh, logged user will be request dot current user. If not logged user, like if the user is not logged in and we are still hitting this page, uh, this will be null. So we're gonna say response dot send locked out, okay? And return from here. Otherwise, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say uh, constant user sockets will be ws dot channel, that's our chat channel. And, and we're basically gonna grab the presence object on that chat channel. And here we're gonna say pull, pull all the sockets for uh, logged user dot ID. So what we're doing is off the present uh, object, we are pulling all the sockets for this particular user ID. Okay, and it, it also accepts enclosure. Maybe if we don't want to pull all the sockets, we only want to pull the sockets for Chrome, or maybe we, want, we only want to pull all the sockets for iPhone. So we can do all that filtering out here. But since right now we want all, I'm going to return true. So this will be an array of user sockets. And here I'm gonna say user sockets dot for each. And here we're gonna get the socket and I'm gonna say socket dot socket dot disconnect, which means we basically wanna get rid of all the sockets for this particular user. So uh, if I come back, it says login failure for sure out here too. And if I say force login with the ID, come back, able to connect, come here, come here. It says from three devices, from three devices, from three devices. But let's say I log out from this one. Yep, I have logged out and come back here and simply say client dot image the message we don't receive it back, which means we are not able to emit any more messages. Same goes here. If I say emit, yep, I cannot do it anymore. And to be more precise, we can basically listen for the disconnected window as well. So I can say window.client.onDisconnect. We're going to say function and list dot inner HTML will be goodbye. Okay. So let's do a refresh, close this tab. We need to log in first. Yep, we did. 
and now we are able to connect go here from two devices here says three devices I made a message all works fine come back log out from this particular tab this one says goodbye this one says goodbye as well and we cannot emit any more messages see how simple and elegant it is with the help of presence object we are also able to get uh, a collective list of all the users who are logged in from multiple devices also we are able to log them out uh, at one time and making sure that they are not able to make use of the socket connections anymore so yeah i believe that's all from this video i'm gonna see you guys next time goodbye